one one balls and place over here. The child will count and place all the balls and they will count and say the number. This help in their sensorial learning. In this now they are uh, under age 4 or 4 plus. What I will do, I will write questions. 4 plus, suppose 3. This is given. Now I will ask the child to put beads. This will improve their fine motor development. This child will do. I have taken cotton buds, I have colored with those cotton buds. First number is 4. We will put 4 cotton buds.
living thing can eat. Okay. This is my clear living thing can eat food, can grow, can read, can move, and can have their babies. And these are these are non-living things. We will divide it into two parts. For class one, natural non-living thing and human made non-living things. Okay. Now, all the living things can eat food. You know, all food, all eat food. Like children will eat the, please give the five examples of living thing. Those can eat food. They will say boy, girl, mother, father, dog. Yeah. So many answers I got in my class. Okay. So then I will tell you there are many things eat food like plants eat food, animals eat food, birds eat food. You know you have seen some birds that eat seeds and grains. Okay. And we need we our need. And many we the living thing grow. How we who or how many grows? Like first we see a little plant, it turns into tree. And we see a baby grown up as an adult. And here you see a baby monkey can be later uh, an adult monkey and here the cup and tiger okay cup turns into we have all you can see <coughs> birds give egg and they turn into satellites and then they will again turn into bird this is this shows growth and have babies also they have babies also okay and now how you breathe they don't know. They don't know. They breathe. They are very small. They don't know. Then we will. I have some experiment. We will like this. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. We we will do some exercise for making them understand how we breathe. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Break out. Then living things can breathe. And in the same way, we can show like this. Now, this is breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. For seeing this, they can understand very quickly and they will do by their own experiment. And then move. How the living thing moves? The dog can move. Like this, cat can move, and many birds, many other insects, and only I think so only one thing that cannot move only grow. That is trees, plants. plants. Yes, I I will give you the example. Can this is tree? This is tree. This is plant. Can it? Move from one place, can it go with you? No. Okay. So this can only grow and it cannot move. Understood? So there are plants and trees cannot move, they can only grow. This is the difference between movement and growth. And many like fish, now uh, living things can have babies. Fish is egg and it turns into fry. Again, they will come into uh, adult, an adult fish. This is tree. Tree or plant have seeds inside it and they will turn into a small plant. Again, they will grow into, they will turn into tree. And here you can see in the same baby. First, we give the bird. <coughs> Baby and it turned into an adult or an adult man or woman. 
numbers is it it later it is placed by the word and it turns into chicken and again become an adjective
we have many things around the world. The things, the fly. Do you see the things? It's very tiny, but the fly, see it in a huge way. So that I will describe what the fly has seen in different ways. So children, please take out your book, page 21. And you will, okay. Then you just repeat with me. You will repeat with me the lines, okay? Yes. So in short, I will describe how the poet has described the view of the fly. Okay. How large unto the tiny fly must little things appear are rose bud like a feather bud it's pickle like a spear. So the poet, uh, what is he doing? He is introducing the ideas with an exclamation mark. That the small thing, very small thing, what we think is very small, it is a very huge to a fly. So in short, see, this is a rose bud. Fly is sitting on the rose bud, but the fly thinks it could be a feather bud. So, this fly means that it is a bed, it can sleep on it. It is as soft as a rose bud. So, this is in sharp. But, it is fun. Rose has fun, pickle. So, we think it is very tiny thing. But, for the fly, it is a like a weapon or spear. It is a like a so, uh, what, so what will happen? If it pickles, then it, it can die. Then it can die. Now come to the next end. The dewdrop like a looking glass. A hair like golden wire. Can you see the dewdrop? Dewdrops are very small. In winter season we can see. But for the this fly, these dewdrops are like a mirror. It sees its face over there. Okay. Now, the smallest grain of mustard seed appears as coal of fire. You all know children, what is mustard seed? You can ask your mother to show you mustard seed. These are very tiny things, mustard seeds. But for this time, this mustard seed is like a coal of fire. Not only coal of fire, it is a frightening coal of fire. So, the this I get afraid by seeing this master seeds. And the last kind I am coming to the last kind <coughs> A loaf of bread, a lofty hill. You have seen loaf of bread, we eat the bread, but for the fly, this loaf of bread is like a huge, long hill. And a wax of cruel leopard. See, wax. It seems to the fly, a cruel leopard. This is a bit bigger than fly, but it seems to apply it's a like a quail leopard. Okay? And specks of salt as bright to see as lambings to worship. And small <coughs> tiny spots of salt, it seems a lambings to worship. So in short I have described because the time is very short. So I have described in short. In the next class we will describe line wise or we will describe in the smart class. We will see but uh, this is all about and one activity I am asking you to do that is you uh, find out some pictures of tiny objects, tiny pages. I have said about the fly but there are many tiny pages. So please in the next class bring the pictures of tiny pages. Okay, thank you. What number? 21 number. He identified, he will identify this number by my this color and then he will see the bottom of the color.
called matter anything students are sitting in the class i can say look at the class and choose any object anything what is made up of matter anything you choose it is made up of matter okay next what is volume the amount of space occupied by something is called volume anything as it is choose any object around you it has volume okay now we will go further what are the different type and states of matter okay first solid second liquid and the third one is gas okay first look around you anything i have picked two which are in side my bag but anything in this classroom there is solid object there is liquid and gas okay so in the case of solid what can we do this is my table box can i change the shape why because that's why the student will ask the question why because we can't change the shape because of the molecular structure molecular structure means small particles which we can't see through our eyes that's a molecules okay that molecular structure is interconnected with each other and their molecular attraction intermolecular attraction is very high that's why we can't change the object without the external factor is we are giving that okay that is the different question we will come to that okay so this is the solid anything is solid this chair is solid board is solid everything is solid now liquid okay <coughs> liquid liquid now solid we can change but in liquid we pour it inside my different box it changes the shape yes yes why now the question is why because same as the molecular structure in liquid is loosely packed loosely packed so is change its shape according where i put this thing okay so the molecular structure molecules are loosely packed has constant volume does not have fixed shape now gas gas we can't hold okay so if i have a balloon i can show you if i breathe out what breathing out carbon dioxide carbon dioxide whatever we can't hold any air but we can breathe out carbon dioxide it is also a gas so i can hold it in a balloon it will take up space and it takes up volume so but why it is freely movable because the intermolecular attraction is least okay so at a glance if what i have said the properties of solid liquid gas at a glance student will see the chart they will have a common idea shape they have definite shape if this is a common chart what i have told it is written in short okay <coughs> and these are the example they will say solid i have not written the names they will say <coughs> but it is a very small thing to put up in a chart there are so many things in the class in the whole school so there are so many examples after that uh, my colleague my dear colleague will continue, continue.
this is the case of solid. Here, the all the uh, molecules are totally packed, are uh, very close to each other. And in case of liquid, it is it has more space in it. It has more space in it. And in case of gas, the molecules are very far apart from each other. And this uh, molecules, this state of matter, when it changes from one state to another on heating, the solid, as we can see, there is an ice cube. On heating, it melts to a liquid. It changes to a liquid. And on heating the liquid, it changes to vapor or gas. And that is called evaporation. Then comes the next part on cooling. On cooling, if we cool the vapor or gas, it changes to <coughs> liquid and, and the process is known as condensation. And if we further uh, freeze the liquid, it changes to a solid. And that is called freezing. So that's it. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Indrani Banerjee from Nam Bharti Prathamik Vidyalay. Today, I am going to present preposition for class four and five. So, before I start with the preposition, let me tell you the <coughs> learning objective will be at the end of the session. The children will be able to. <coughs> Define preposition, they will be able to identify preposition and they will be able to use preposition correctly in a given sentence. So, assuming that this is a classroom, I have just entered the class and I have greeted my students. Uh, as per previous knowledge, I would like to ask the students if they have heard the words. In, on, into, with, for. Children, are you acquainted with all these words? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. These words are called prepositions. Now, the definition of preposition is that it shows us the relationship between a noun and a pronoun and the other words in a sentence in terms of place, time, and movement. Now, it seems hard, it seems complicated. Oh, let me explain it to you. Uh, my God, where is my pen pouch? Where did I leave my pen pouch? I am unable to find my pen pouch. Where is it? My table. Okay, my pen pouch is on the table. And what about my black bag? Where is my black bag? It's under the under table. table. Oh, under the table. Yeah, it's under the table. So, children, notice two words. On the table, when you say on the table, I looked at the surface of the table, immediately I understood that it is on the table. And whenever you say under the table, I looked at a certain position, I stooped down and I looked at a certain position on the floor. I understood that that particular position is under the table. So on and under, these two are prepositions. They tell us the relationship between two objects. In this case, this is my pouch and the table, the bag and the table. When I say on, I look at the surface of the table. When I, when you say under, then I look at a certain position on the floor. So these are called the preposition of place. Okay? So children, preposition of place actually tells us the, about the position of a noun in relation to another noun. So from this chart, children, can you tell me some more preposition of place? Can you see some more preposition of place? This is in, when the ball is in the box. So this is over, when something is over it. Not touching the surface, but it is over it. At the top. So this is before, when it in front of, behind. All these are prepositions of place. Now, after preposition of place, I have preposition of direction or movement, which is along. The boat is flowing along the current. Across. The
the dog ran across the road towards Joshi is coming towards me okay all these are prepositions of movement or direction can you tell me what is the difference between the preposition of place and preposition of movement or direction any idea do you have any idea preposition of place and direction so in case of preposition of place the object is standing there is movement but here in case of preposition of direction or movement the object is moving for example the fish is in water the frog jumped into the water so this is preposition of movement and the previous one was preposition of place okay now we will deal with preposition of time so here i have i am showing you a triangle where we have used in or at first i will deal with preposition of time when we are speaking about general or a bigger span of time we use preposition in for example in the 80s the mothers were more strict okay so in the year 1970 we were not born okay so <coughs> a whole year total 365 days and now when we use on we use a more specific thing my birthday is on 7th may okay uh i will go to your place on friday a bit bigger and at is very specific that is i will study at 7 am i will play at 5 pm a very specific in in case of general or bigger more on is more specific and at is absolutely specific <coughs> okay so uh, children do you have any question about preposition of time place or movement if you have any question you can ask over and about what you say to okay Oh, okay. The birds are flying over the trees. Okay, so they are flying past, and above is it's hovering. It's hovering above, just at the top of the tree. That is above. Is it clear? Hovering above without touching the surface. On means touching the surface. Above means it's Hovering above and over means it's flying, going away. Okay. My question is, over the river and sand is above our head. Why is it so? Sorry. Sorry. Question is, over the river and the sand is above our head. Okay. The fan is above our head because it's not touching on our head. It's not touching the surface. It is above. Both are above. Because the bridge is actually connecting the two points, two points. The bridge is connecting the two points of the on uh, on either side of the river. Okay. So, children, if you are okay with it, I would like to give you an activity. Right? At this stage, these are the small platters I have made on the position. At random, I will distribute the platters to the children. and one by one they will come and read the sentence and put the right placard in the right place if they are right i will ask them why they are right or rather why do they think uh, here i need the uh, list of preposition there will be a list of why do they think this is right they need to explain so that i understand that their concept is clear <coughs> if they are wrong if they choose the wrong preposition at the wrong place then what i will do is i will try to or i will rather 
and make their concept clear with the help of the list of preposition. Okay? So, this was all about preposition and I would like to ask my colleagues if they have anything to suggest so that I can make the class more interactive and interesting. Sometimes both that and all are used for time. Sometimes both that and all are used for time. So when do we use that and when do we use all? Okay. At. We use at to explain a specific time. The dogs bark at midnight. Uh, I will study at 6 o'clock in the evening, a specific time. And on is a bit generalized. I will have a holiday on Sunday. Sunday is a wider period of time. The whole Sunday I will have a holiday. On is a bigger span of time. And at is specific time. Yeah, on Sunday at 6 a.m. Yes. I will go to play on Sunday at 6 o'clock in the morning. When there will be clock time, we will use that. And there will be any period of time. Period of time.
in agriculture also there was an impact of industrial revolution jechota he invented the seed drill this helped the farmers to plant more seeds in a shorter period and in a larger area this was jechota's seed drill George Stevenson he invented the steam locomotives and he is known as the father of rail after completing this as i have already imparted uh, this chapter in class 5 i may i i was a uh, bit confused whether they will uh, whether they can remember or recollect the names or not of the inventors and their image so i need a trick so that they can memorize sack he was related to communication means he invented the telephone and he also worked with the hearing difficulties of many people next comes Guglielmo Marconi he invented wireless so these two people were in the lead to communication after this i made this sack george jeptis sack means samuel crompton john means james watt c sack s a he is only the first two letters uh, c is uh, his son then job then jet jet total and jess george stevens they were related with machines means they invented machines next comes ejiver means alexander graham bell and marconi they were machines about things they were with computers then whether they have interacted with me well or whether they understood this well i Thought of a game. The name of the game is Bingo. Bingo is a game which improves someone's memory, and it can be enjoyed at any age, regardless of age. So, here are some words, and there are some flashcards in my hand. Each word is connected to one word in the box. So, can we play the game now? Acha, when the word will be correct, I will just put a cross. Acha, number one. What is this? Number one. 